Hi everyone, I'm Rochelle, and I have three little girls. Anna, who is four years old, Chaley, who is two and a half, and Gemma, who is eight months. And if you're joining me for the first time, welcome to my channel, where I make videos on integrating the Montessori method with our Catholic faith at home. Lately, I've been on a decluttering kick with a friend of mine, and I recently went through all of our Montessori materials and toys. It feels so good to look in our storage room where all of our materials are kept and know that it's decluttered, simplified, and organized. We started our Montessori journey about four years ago, and I can tell you firsthand that having an organized system to store all of your materials really does make a difference. You're never gonna wanna rotate anything if you can't find anything. And since you're rotating materials on a regular basis in a Montessori home, having a place to store and organize your materials is a must. The system that I created for myself is really very simple, but after years of doing it, I can tell you that it really does work. It helps me to rotate on a regular basis, keep things organized, and keep materials to a minimum because I only keep what I can fit in my containers. And our collection that I'm gonna show you today includes all of our toys and all of our homeschool materials. But if you're not homeschooling, then your collection is gonna look very different than mine. Also, by sharing with you what I have today, I am in no way implying that you need to have all of these things too. Everyone's situation is going to look completely different. I am just one parent sharing with you all our own collection that we've collected from over the years based on the interests of my own children. These are the materials that I have saved for, that I have made myself, and that I even found at thrift stores. And since I recently did a massive decluttering of all of our stuff, I can tell you that these are the ones that we used most frequently, essentially our favorites. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you not only how I store and organize our Montessori materials, but also what's inside each of our storage containers and how you can make this system work for your own family. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a real life storage room tour of where we keep our Montessori materials. I have eight different storage bins and I'm gonna go ahead and show you what's inside each one but for now I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the different categories that I have labeled so I have arts and crafts I have mathematics Catholicism science and geography which is kind of a catch-all bin which we'll talk about <laughs> I have a language bin practical life sensorial our open-ended toys and an infant bin and then up top I have a bunch of different trays and bowls that are just currently out of rotation and then to the right I have some puzzles that are also out of rotation so that's what I keep up top because I don't I don't you know need to take those down as frequently and they're just lighter it was really important to me to have access to these materials wherever I'm gonna be using them the most. So this storage area is right next to our homeschool room, which I feel really blessed about because I can just grab these containers when I need them and it makes rotating things really easy. So I would definitely recommend that. So wherever your space is that you have a playroom or homeschool room, I would just make it easier on yourself and have it close by. So now I'm gonna show you guys where we keep our books. So I am currently in an office space that is also right next to our homeschool room. So it's easy for me to just easily access. And we have a little closet in our office space and half of it currently is being used for storing all of our kids' books. And then down below, I just have some office supplies and some exercise equipment. Up top, I have all of our picture books that are out of rotation and some chapter books. I have. Currently we have Sophie Mouse and Mercy Watson. We even have Pooh Bear up there. 
And then on the second shelf, I have all of our board books that are out of rotation. We also have a lot of books in the girls' bedrooms as well as our homeschool room. So I rotate books out every week, just like I do all of our shelf work. And that works really well for me. You know, coming in here when it's so close by to the homeschool room, which is predominantly where most of our books are anyway, really helps me out. So that's what we do with our books. Okay, so I am filming this during nap time and I have little Gemma with me. So if you hear little baby noises in the background, that's her. <laughs> Just letting you guys know that. So starting here with our math bin, I'm just showing you this is what we have so far that's out of rotation. So we do currently have a lot of math materials on our homeschooling shelves. And in addition to that, um, some of this stuff could be sensorial and a lot of the prerequisites for, for math is actually, you know, best suited for our sensorial bin. Some of this stuff could de definitely double as that, but this is just what I feel is, is really more math centered. So let me go ahead and show you. First, we have our wooden geometric shapes, our geometric sorter, the Melissa and Doug self-correcting number puzzle that goes from one to 20, our DIY sandpaper numbers, our numbers and shapes tracing board, a 24 piece farm themed jigsaw puzzle, an assortment of glass beads for cards and counters, the Melissa and Doug magnetic fishing game, and our 100 frame and all the accessories to go with it. So all of the numbers and the wool balls. So now I'm gonna show you what's inside our language bin. So starting off, we have our Bob books. And inside this large wooden tray, is our cursive movable alphabet, which Anna has not even used yet. It is a new material she hasn't even seen, but soon enough, uh, she is going to be mastering her letters pretty soon here, and this is gonna be our next step. So this is just in our language bin until she's ready. Okay, and this is what it looks like underneath <laughs> the big movable alphabet. So I have the Melissa and Doug self-correcting alphabet puzzle, super genius CVC cards, which we have not used yet, but this is something I want to use when she's working with the movable alphabet. Some pattern tracing cards that I just printed on cardstock paper for our sand tray. Our sand paper letters that are currently out of rotation. Our beginning sound letter boxes. I currently have five of them in here and the sixth one is on our shelf. Calendar accessories for our wooden calendar. Miniature language objects that are currently out of rotation. Beginning sound letter to picture matching cards, which I also supplement for our beginning sound letter boxes. This is also a material we haven't used yet, but this is just a Montessori movable alphabet work mat. And in here, in all of these bags, are our language objects. And most of them have either um, the three-part cards or classification cards. For most of them, I purchased the Safari Limited figurines. And some of them, though, I did buy the Schleich figurines, which are a little bit more expensive. So I'll point those out as I show you. So starting off, we have our farm animals. These are with the Schleich figurines and cards that I made by myself. The Safari Limited birds without any cards. Dogs and cats from Schleich again, which with cards that I made by myself. Safari Limited sea creatures, vehicles, bathroom cards that I made for the girls a few years ago and are actually match up to what we use. So that's kind of fun for them to actually do real life classification. Vegetables and fruit, woodland animals, pets, flowers, Arctic animals, African wildlife animals, and bugs. So now sharing with you what's inside our sensorial bin, which I find that this one is probably our fullest bin. Uh, I just did, like I was telling you guys, a big decluttering of things, and I did purge this one down quite a bit. So let's go through what I still have. Starting off, we have the Melissa and Doug jigsaw puzzles. These are the 12-piece vehicle puzzles, and it comes with four of them in a box. 
We have an assortment of colorful bean bags, which we have used these for many different things. So this is definitely a keeper. Inside this drawstring bag is a geo board with a ton of rubber bands. This bag contains about 22 piece jigsaw puzzles. This material is definitely a favorite. This is the Haba Pegs and Rings. This is a KiwiCo color matching game. These are DIY smelling jars, but I also use them for listening jars and just interchange them. Some water beads, a color cube game, and the matching cards that go with it. An ocean themed sorting game that I got from a KiwiCo kit. A small version of the knob cylinders. Our handbell set and some music to go with it. A bag of musical instruments, our drum, some free small, medium, and big cards that I printed from Montessori Print Shop. This is a traditional Montessori toy, the discs on a horizontal dowel, and a set of pattern shape puzzles. So this bin is one of my favorites. It's Practical Life, and I really enjoy all the Practical Life materials through Montessori. So this one has shifted over the years, but currently I feel like we have a really good mix of some of the more, um, I don't know, the Practical Life materials that I don't necessarily need to have on the shelves. So for example, you know, all of our kitchen supplies, they stay in the kitchen right because we're living real life and we're cooking real meals with those and um, a lot of this stuff here you'll find is more like I'm trying to kind of do more handicraft work so stuff that's going to prepare them for either for writing or for sewing or for you know just practicing the fine motor work um, so some scooping materials in here pouring with pictures that kind of stuff is is mainly what I have here so we have an assortment of clothes pins, a bag of scissors, and right now the other scissors are being used in our homeschool room, so there's just one pair in here. An assortment of fine motor tools that we use for transferring with tongs or scooping. There's even an eyedropper in here. A DIY sewing kit, which right now includes an embroidery loop, some yarn, and also some darning needles. An assortment of lacing boards and some shoelaces. Sponges, which we mainly use for cleaning up the homeschool room. The hape twist and turn blocks. Lacing beads. Pin pricking work with the jumbo push pins and cork trivets. A sanding block for sanding wood. Locks and keys. A rainbow poppet. We have another one of these upstairs. An assortment of pitchers. The Haba shape tack set. And the Melissa and Doug latch board. This bin is our Catholicism, science, geography, <laughs> unit study bin. It's kind of a catch-all bin. And that's okay with me because my focus right now is just reading, writing, and basic math. So in this bin, I have a Good Shepherd set for Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I'm not sure if I mentioned this to you guys, but I am a trained CGS catechist, and I got this from my training and our atrium doesn't need it. And so I thought I would use it for our own faith study at home during homeschool time. And so I thought it would be a fun project for my girls and I to just paint it together, to sand it down and paint it and, and use it for homeschool. Some beakers for some science experiments or color mixing, some seasonal or holiday songs. This whole bag was for our magnet unit that we had when my girls were really interested in magnets some spring themed silhouette matching cards, an assortment of fall themed cards, continent three part cards, a magnifying glass, our prayer table clocks that I'll make sure to link below, a bag filled with stuff from our Christmas unit, and last is an All Saints unit. So in our arts and crafts bin, we have finger painting paper, some butcher paper, an assortment of pom-poms that we use for scooping and transferring and color sorting. Dot markers, which are definitely a favorite for both of my girls. Finger paints, Play-Doh accessories, stickers, beads, extra Stabby Low colored pencils and a few sharpeners, colored pencils and a sharpener, an assortment of glue and glue sticks, two ink pads and stamps, 
whiteboard markers with erasers on the ends, watercolor paints, different sized paint brushes, an art smock, and some plastic painting palettes, tracing paper, and watercolor paper. This is our open-ended bin. These are essentially all of their toys that are not necessarily kept like a Montessori material where it has one purpose. These have open-ended purposes to them. They can just play with them. They can do imaginative play. And I do exchange these out upstairs in our living room. We have a few bins, about four of them. Right now we have wooden blocks, magnet tiles, we have Legos and some Sarah's silks. And then I just change them out as needed. So whenever I find the girls, you know, stop playing with their Legos, for example, then I just switch it out with another open-ended toy. So I have a bunch of doll accessories in here, including a few little baby doll carriers, some plastic dinos that my daughter Chaley just loves, some hand-painted Saint Peg dolls, some extra magnet tiles because we have quite a large set of them and a doctor kit. And the last bin that I'm gonna share with you today is our infant storage bin. I feel like this is kind of the, the tried and true toys that I have used with both of my older girls and I'm currently using with Gemma, my seven month old. These are my favorites. These are the ones that I've come back to over and over again. And I mean, obviously these are the out of rotation toys. So I do have some other toys that aren't currently in here, but these are my favorites. These are the ones that I kept coming back to for all of my girls. And um, yeah, and I, I'm happy to share that with you because you really don't need everything. So first we have this ball rattle, which is great for when the kids are starting to crawl. This is a sensory toy that has a bunch of different ribbons that the baby can play with and kind of that crinkly sound on the sides. A wooden ring stacker, a plastic stacking toy, some squishy blocks when they're first learning how to stack, a crinkly bag with a ring inside. I'm gonna pause here and just share with you that we actually purchased a Love Every subscription for Anna for her first year of life. And that was to help me when I was new to Montessori to really just, you know, have toys sent to me that were age appropriate, developmentally appropriate, that meant a lot to me. So that really helped me. And in the box, I, I kept all of the Love Every manuals that tell you how to use the toy and when you should be using it. And I still refer to them. So I love having these. Um, and if you are considering getting Love Every for your child, I would highly recommend it for the first year of life for sure. It really helped me out. Next is a pop-up toy, a ball drop that actually slides back and forth, a three-part puzzle, another three-piece puzzle that ranges from small to big, a shape sorter that we got as a gift from an Etsy shop, a favorite toy for all three of my girls. This is essentially, it's a tissue box, but it has cloth. And then as the child is learning to grab onto things and practice that pincer grip, they pull and another one pops out. This is the Ever Earth car ramp toy. This is a love every booklet that contains black and white images for a newborn, a soft book, this is just a baby photo album, but I love making these for each of my girls. This one is Chili's. An assortment of zipper pouches that just came with the Love Every kits. A Hape butterfly walker that just connects to the end. And when the child is first learning to walk, they can push this one around. And in this bag, I have a bunch of different hand manipulatives. So for example, a few of them I have are um, the squish rattle, the egg in a cup, and I even have the interlocking discs. Well, I hope you liked today's video. I'll be sure to link as many items as possible that I shared with you today in the description box below. And if you liked today's video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss a new video, which I do try to post every other week. Thank you again for coming to my channel where I make videos on integrating the Montessori method with our Catholic faith at home. I'll see you again next time. God bless.